Yeah, welcome back and thank you very much indeed for uh, joining us and staying with us. Can, could you please pass me that paper? Thank you very much. And let's say a quick happy birthday to Mr. Theodoric Segbafi as a sales manager of Rana Motors, uh, Kia producers of Kia and Whitney Boachi Mensa as well of uh, WBM Innovations and also to you. Little Alicum Phelps states your birthday today. The Ghanaian Times this morning reports that deal with get fund officials past present for abuse of power. Graduate students, the Grassack presidents there on the front page, Samuel Sego is uh, calling for that punishment. GJ fumes at Parliament over speaker's ruling on media coverage. He says it's an affront to press freedom. Ghana loses. 25 million Ghana cities to H1N1 in 2010 2011 due to failure to plan against disease, according to the audit situation on business. Woman in court for 1 million Ghana cities fraud. Of Oswan Pofu, Kwekubwahin case, audio recording admitted in evidence. I'm sure you remember the tape that was said to have been doctored. Well, it's been admitted finally in the ongoing trial. The Finder newspaper, failure to complete road projects on time. Some 168.5 million Ghana cities, a total of 3.37.8 million dollars, uh, cost variations on only two contracts, totaling 65.6 .6 kilometers. Ghana with day. CBG pays 8,884 individual customers. Free SHS is good, according to the European Union MP. And 85% of Ghanaians say judges, court officials are corrupt, according to a recent Afrobarometer report. ECG extends power to 400 communities in the eastern region. The Daily Guide. NDC man confirms of Oswam Pofu leaked tape. Ghana opens consulate in Dortmund. NPP will retain power uh, in Elembele, according to DCN. Parliament cools down media after speaker's fiat. <sighs> the Daily Graphic is our very final one. Avert this environmental time bomb. Uh, more floods to hit Accra this year. Meteo warns and process to create office of register of companies begins. And uh, finally, WAPCO uh, supply to Ghana. Uh, WAPCO to resume supply to Ghana, beg your pardon. And let's check if we have anything on the, on the back page. Well, it's all sports, 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 and sports. But on 3news.com, it says government to withdraw soldiers from Operation Vanguard. And we've also told you how the Electoral Commission's website is non-functional. My guest this morning is Mr. Eric Chum. He is uh, the... Uh, a member of the MPP's communication team is also uh, looking closely at the people of the Fantiaco South uh, in, in, uh, up there. Eric, good morning. Thank you very much for your good time. Good morning, Johnny. How and are also, you? very well. And also, Mr. Mathias uh, Alagbo is a Volta Regional Youth Organizer of the NDC. Mathias, welcome. Thank good you. Good to have you. This will be your first? Uh, yeah. Great. Welcome. But not the first. First with you. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So how are the people of Volta Region doing? We're doing good. Very, very well. We're fine. Yeah. fine. Sure. Okay. Eric, you? Well, how fantastic. The, how are the grounds? The grounds is... I need to constantly <laughs> check. <because> <laughs> <laughs> well, I, mean, I think that we are grateful to the people of Antioch South. Mm -hmm. uh, in this particular case, the MPP folks and the delegates mm -hmm. for the warm reception that they've given us so far. Um, again, it's an internal contest. So, uh, essentially, uh, we're trying to ensure that uh, by the end of the campaign mm -hmm. and then the election, yeah. we're still one united family to, I mean, push forward. Uh, okay. I mean, it's our seat. It's, a, it's one of our traditional uh, seats, so there's no uh, cause for alarm there. Okay. Uh, so really, that's what we're looking to, to do. Okay. Uh, to start with, good morning to yourself, right. to Matthias. I haven't met him before. Mm -hmm. And then also to the good people who are watching uh, this morning. Okay. Great. Let's let's start off. This morning, uh, I had calls to talk about the Electoral Commission's website. Mm -hmm. It's been down. Um, some observers have said that since Dr. Jin Mensah took over, it's been down. And we've been monitoring from our newsroom here for the last two months. If you key in www.ec.gov.gh, mm -hmm. you would get bandwidth exceeded with a white screen. Now, the word on the street is that we paid 108 thousand US dollars for that website and, and other things that will make sure that the website is functional. Our IT experts have explained to us that if you ever read that bandwidth has been exceeded, it means that the resources that were allocated to the web website have been finished. Mm -hmm. Now for you as key actors in the political on the political landscape, 
in the run-up to the December 7th election. How do you take this? You would need information. Your followers would do the same. What do you make of, of this happening? Well, um, thank you very much. I mean, um, you know, I have a bit of a background in in um, IT. Absolutely. And all of That's why I'm starting so. with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but then it's also difficult to sit here and be able to uh, provide a prognosis of what they have in challenges. Mm -hmm. But in this day and age, um, where people are yearning for information, mm -hmm. uh, there's absolutely no excuse for the website to be down for this long. Mm -hmm. I haven't visited it, so I can't ascertain if that's the case or not. But mm -hmm. there's no reason to doubt what you're saying. Mm -hmm. it's in this day and age, with all the technology that abounds, right. um, I believe that there's no real reason why, even if they're having challenges, mm -hmm. uh, it should be resolved. Right. Uh, an, ex an experience that I have mm -hmm. uh, also to do with issues, to do with protocols, okay. and even um, administration of these websites. Mm -hmm. uh, anytime either there's uh, uh, some kind of movement or new people come into play, mm -hmm. uh, you realize that the management of these protocols, right. or the login details and mm -hmm. who are administrators, um, become a challenge because okay. If you don't go through a proper handing over mm. process, for instance, even when it comes to your IT infrastructure, you would have challenges like this. Mm. But like I'm saying, I'm not sure what the real reasons are, but I mean, two months is such a long time to have uh, a website of such an integral part of our democratic mm. uh, architecture down. Uh, so I think that probably we have to ask a bit more questions. Right. I mean, you guys have more opportunity to do them than I do. And to find out exactly <coughs> what the issues are, or sometimes if it means that they're probably going through uh, a new revamp mm -hmm. or they're trying mm -hmm. to build a new website, there are things that need to be done. You can create uh, a simple interface for mm -hmm. people to be able to access, uh, I mean, some information right. whilst you're building okay. a new on, site on, for, the back. on the back, okay. uh, for instance or some information as to why the site, for instance, is down right. whilst you're working on other mm -hmm. things. I mean, again, with the technology and the uh, advent of some of these new ways of either hacking into websites mm -hmm. and everything, it's important that, I mean, it's also secured and they have proper security uh, measures in place. So mm -hmm. let's, let's wait and see. Let's probably get an idea from them why the website is down. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm on the website now, www.ec.gov.gh. It says bandwidth limit exceeded. The server is temporarily unavailable to service. Your request due to the site owner reaching his or her bandwidth limit. Please try again later. <coughs> is our money finished? That's, that's what I'm asking. Uh, we, we've paid more than $100,000. No, but you see, so, so that's... Uh, you and IT, I mean, you yeah, see, yeah, when, yeah, so when these things happen... When, that's what, that's what somebody I'm saying. That. That there has to be... Somebody said that it means that our resources that we are located... No, 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 it doesn't work like okay. that. So the website itself is hosted. Right. Right, and either it's hosted locally or remotely. Right. And there's all, all sorts of things that actually... Uh, make sure that it actually it's actually by Nita. Exactly. So it might be an issue with the host or even changing the host. Okay. There are also uh, issues to do with even having like a, a backup, mm -hmm. for instance. So, so most websites, I mean, have backup servers that right. they use in case mm -hmm. that something mm -hmm. until what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will never be an issue to do with money. Okay. Um, as in you, you have a specific amount of money mm -hmm. allocated to a website and one is done. Okay. Then or maybe space. Exactly. That's okay. what I'm saying. That so the resource is not money, is space. Yeah. Actually. No, but that's what I'm saying. That it will be extremely difficult to, to sit here, to sit here and even pinpoint exactly what the issues are. Okay. But I mean, like I'm saying, there's absolutely no excuse in this day and age where people are clamoring for information in real time and all that for a website off the EC mm -hmm. to be down for two months. But maybe that's like Claire. Uh, how do you take it as a political actor, uh, a key political actor going into such a major election where the stakes are high? How do you take it from the side of the MPP? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't think that the party has issued an official position on the matter. I mean, this is the first time it's, it's, mm -hmm. coming, it's coming to my okay. attention. Okay. Now, I'm sure that at the party hierarchy, 
um, the real position of the party will be will be addressed. But like I'm saying, on a personal level, mm. like I'm saying that it's wrong. Okay. Uh, I mean, there has to be a very good reason why, a tangible reason why. Um, in this day and age, with all the technology that abounds, okay. that we, we, we have a website down right. for two months. Mm. It might have been an attempt or, I mean, I'm, not, I'm speculating, right. but they have to come out and tell us why it's down. Okay. Yeah. Matthias, take a bite on this one. H how do you take this as a, a communicator for your party, a regional organizer for the NDC in the, in the Volta region? How do you take this, uh, that the website of the Electoral Commission is down? Frankly, Kudu, for example, says that speaks to lack of transparency on the part of the Electoral Commission. What do you say? Thank you, Johnny. Um, I must admit that the leadership of uh, Madame Jemensa mm -hmm. of the Electoral Commission is a matter of serious concern uh, since she took over as the head of that institution which borders on the peace and stability of our country mm -hmm. depending on how the outcomes of elections are managed mm -hmm. and uh, on, on the overall picture the overall picture as we I can analyze mm -hmm. I say that the EC is rehearsing measuring and um, it, they rehearsing and measuring the pulse of the Ghanaian people okay. on information we told. Really? really? Yes. <laughs> that, that's what you see? Yeah, that's right. That's like some serious um, conspiracy yeah, theory. Yeah, right? because uh, do you know you know that you know how the outcome of the 2016 elections has gone, mm. and the Bruhaha that is ongoing with regard to the ECS on transparency mm. and other issues. Still today, we have not gazetted the EC has not taken steps to gazette the 2016 election results. Right, a key determinant that to actually give the total picture of how that election. But, but that's all right. Went. The results but should have been gazetted yeah. at, at this point. As, as of today, mm. Jean Mason's leadership of the EC, they have not gazetted that result. And I would rather you say the Electoral Commission okay, the electoral and not single commission. out okay. one but individual because was not the EC when, okay, sure. when the election okay, was the electoral commission. So the Electoral Commission is not As of today, right. that we sit here, 2016 result is not gazetted. Okay. And I know very well of a member of parliament who actually wrote to the EC to request the information. Right, MS Nogbe. Yes. And they found solace in a certain aspects of the, the inform, uh, right to information act that mm -hmm. parliament have to determine um, the, how much cost they need to pay to assess mm -hmm. the information. Mm -hmm. Based on that, they will not release the information. Mm -hmm. So the raw picture is that with, and the, the posturing of the EC with regard to how the, the push or the show off mm -hmm. any attempt by other civil society organizations mm -hmm. or prominent Ghanaians or Ghanaians of concern right. seeking for information mm -hmm. and perhaps even looking for an interface mm -hmm. to actually have a dialogue and this whole issue of an indemnity clause of the independence of the uh, electoral commission mm -hmm. and it's like we are launch ourselves we do what we like and see today websites mm -hmm. and as a small child we have individuals having blocks that are functional for years and this is a very important institution of state and that is the website it's supposed to be a place where you look for every information with regard to their preparedness procurement issues with regard to this so-called and a new voter register they want to do this uh, this is a, a place where any Ghanaian and anybody of concern who want to access information can go first and foremost mm -hmm. Look at where it is. And it is just a rehearsal to test the post of the Ghanaian people. Why do you keep going back to say it's a rehearsal? <laughs> where did you learn that from? Well, I, that is my personal conviction. Okay. I have because I have monitored the activities of the EC uh, since Jen Mesa took control. Okay. Uh, you know, you can, there's a leadership of the EC mm -hmm. and the backstop of the leader. Right. And the, the rate at which they shove off anybody who seeks for dialogue. And they say, no, you can't come. We have a right to do what we want to do. And there's no justification today, like my brother rightly mm -hmm. pointed out. The EC cannot talk about not having money. Mm -hmm. You have been given hundreds of millions of uh, Ghana cities uh, that you decide to do f on things that not really matter at this point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, so maintenance of a basic website that carry critical information for mm -hmm. Ghanaian people to assess, the lack of it shows that there is a dressing rehearsal to test the post of Ghanaian people that when we hold information, how the Ghanaian people react. That is what, 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 what do on. they want to achieve with that dress rehearsal? Um, they are the best people who can speak to it. You are the one saying it. So you tell me, what do you see looking into the crystal ball? Looking what are they rehearsing for? They are rehearsing for more or less like, you know, there's a lot of fishiness going on with the EC. Mm. They come and tell us one thing and then what happens next is different. Do not forget that the, the justification 
which uh, the, was advanced by the EC, where they need to compile a whole new biometric register, including the kits, the software, and everything was like, going to be cheaper. But the tender documents that actually is in um, the public domain currently that we have access to shows that the cost which they told us, what they're actually going to spend now is much higher. And in actual fact, the first committee put in place by the EC to actually review the tenders actually pointed to somebody who, who won because that is not a favorable company to the EC. Quickly, she canceled it and then reconstitute a new one to the extent that members of the previous committee decided they would not be part of it. And then she came out to choose a company that she wanted at a very exorbitant cost, even as we speak, without taxes. So when the tax comes in, I will be spending close to $80 million on when she told us that we spend just about 50 million. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of the, the, uh, an opaque culture, lack of transparency, and withholding information, doing things as they like. And it is a way to test our pulse to see how do we react. And I see danger ahead. Eric says you cannot sit here and postulate mm -hmm. what, mm -hmm. what I it mean, is. I mean, I because if you're, if you're looking at it, from this eye, we are alleging dress rehearsal and lack of uh, uh, transparency and all of that. Eric says, look, it could, this bandwidth exceeded could be anything. It could be anything. Maybe we're changing the vendor, we're, we're trying to <laughs> it's reorganize the website, it's, we're it's, doing... It's unacceptable to me. Yeah, but and then if, if, if you go, it's, I, I said it's unacceptable. You see, but it's, there's a certain dangerous. It is my personally held view. There's, yes, okay. see, it is a, my personally uh, held journey. view. Okay, journey. all right. Can right. I, listen, right. Listen. There's a very dangerous game being played by the NDC, which is, and it's right. even come all the way from their flag bearer, mm -hmm. former President John Mahama, in terms of creating a certain perception about the EC, okay. right, and which is in total abeyance with. Uh, earlier held views mm -hmm. on the fact that the EC is meant to be an independent institution and it should be allowed to do what is mandated to do constitutionally, mm -hmm. right? Now, you can tell that there's a very uh, concerted attack mm -hmm. on the EC mm -hmm. and all sorts of ridiculous, if you like, conspiracy theories mm -hmm. uh, coming from them. As far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. it's a website. I don't really understand how that I mean, dovetails into some uh, attempt to either withhold information mm -hmm. and all of those things. I mean, I feel that, like, and we have to be candid ourselves. I mean, and in terms of proper corporate governance and all of mm -hmm. these things, issues to do with, I mean, a website and its management of it and mm -hmm. everything should be something that should be like uh, at a very basic level being able Matthias to manage. Says, uh, the yeah, but is practicing, is he, yeah, and he's gone into he's gone into the wrong. It's, it's almost the same. React to the withdrawal is of he, information. It's he, it's almost it's, it's gone into the realms of uh, basically uh, conspiracy, mm -hmm. right? And I think that this, it doesn't augur well for our democracy. You know, I would expect that as a political party mm -hmm. in opposition, mm -hmm. the focus would be on telling Ghanaians mm -hmm. what your alternative uh, uh, policies are, right. what you would do differently mm -hmm. given an opportunity because your last eight years was abysmal. Mm -hmm. You understand? And then you have that conversation. This certain is almost a sociable appetite to attack the EC. Isn't that here or there? I mean, when it happens like that, I would sit here and then you probably would, would say, or people watching would say that, why is Eric uh, becoming a, a, a PR or is a spokesperson mm -hmm. for the EC? I don't want to do that. But the, the point is that for us, to, if we believe in this democracy and the tenets of it, and the fact that we've all agreed that mm -hmm. we're going to be governed by a certain set of rules, mm -hmm. this attempt by the NDC to denigrate the uh, EC at every Opportunity, every mm. least opportunity mm. for me is dangerous. You, you, you know, said, you said nearly, you said nearly the same things he said. Yeah. The only departure is that he thinks no, the electoral commission is holding information to see how the public reacts. Because I didn't, I didn't. You go condemn on. that the website. Was yes, e e e and exactly. he said the same thing. Yeah, and but but I also said that. Right. I mean, as you sit here, mm. we can't. I can't pretend to know exactly the inner workings of the EC and right. what it does or what happens in the but, but IT. As, but as an but, IT person, but as somebody, you could know what options, I have, I have, options I have, could, I have, could, could have caused I, this. I have run businesses solely on online platforms. Right. And so, for instance, if my business, uh, my website was <laughs> to go down for two hours, it's a travesty. It's, it's like, a, it's unacceptable. Right. But, but so as, for but me, so as an IT person, yeah. you would know 
what and what could be the cause of this. You would know. Yeah, but options. that is that is why we have we have we have stated that you have to go down and find a way of uh, checking exactly what the issues are. I wouldn't know. Okay, you but know usually when a, a white screen like this yeah, hits you it, in it the could, face, it could be. What it could, could be. What could be that's yeah. what I'm saying. They have issues with server, the hosting of of it. Uh, have issues to do with bugs, okay. or maybe an attempt by somebody to hack it oh, into okay. it. Okay. So as part of a security measure, right, it's pulled down. I don't know. Okay. okay. Right. It and I don't want to sit here. And okay. I don't want to sit here to speculate. Okay. All I'm saying is that in the interest of this country, mm. I mean this whole idea of a national cohesion, it's mm. important, it's imperative. Just by virtue of the fact that you want to win an election, okay. does not mean that you have to go to the ridiculous lens of trying okay. to that, implicate that point is one, yeah, so you don't run down the you don't run down the electoral commission. Thank you Especially very much. taking mm. taking mm. Uh, some level of uh, if like if I'm taking advice from the former president, mm. where he clearly states that well the EC that was in as far back as 2016, mm. where there were similar agitations, uh, issues to be register and all of those things. He said that. The EC should be allowed to work. Okay. Then what happens? I mean, three, four years down the line, they've changed. It does appear that time. when a party is in power, they tend to agree with the electoral commission. No, but as, a, as a I've certain, come to know, a certain level of consistency mm. is important. But as I've come to know, no, but every I'm party in here. power, uh, you were agitating. Your side was agitating in 2012. Mm. In 2020, you are agreeing with the electoral commission. So no, but but it's, what's, it's, is I it, think the that position, a party in power see, the position, tends to agree with the government. The position, the, the, the position of the MPP has been consistent since okay. 1992. Okay. We have been progressive in terms of how we're able to improve our election. Uh, okay, uh, Let, let's not make this NDC MPP. Yeah, you we're, talking, we're, we're done talking we're about, the, about the Electoral Commission's website. Can I, can I just no, no, you, you, you're, you're okay. Can you're I, fine. Can you're I, you're I, fine. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Have one minute. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. You're fine. Let's not make this NDC MPP. <laughs> we're talking about the Electoral Commission's website. And for those of you who have checked and are sending me messages, the website is www.ec.gov.gh. You should be asking questions. The Electoral Commission is on Twitter, it's on Facebook. Ask questions. We are asking the questions on your behalf, but you have a voice as well. Ask why the website of the Electoral Commission is not functional. But the government has served notice that from March, beginning of March 2020, that uh, was from Sunday, they withdraw the military component of the anti galamse Mining Tax Force Operation Vanguard from the field. Uh, new sources at the Ministerial Committee on Illegal Mining suggest that this is because so far over 1,000 small-scale miners have been vetted and cleared to mine under environmentally friendly laws. To continue effective monitoring, mining guards and 144 drone pilots have been deployed to monitor the approved miners. Operation Vanguard started as a military police joint tax force set up in 2017 to combat the operation of illegal miners in Ghana. The tax force is regularly in the news for arrests and seizures of mining equipment from illegal miners. It goes on and on and on and on. Matthias, let me start the conversation with you. Do you, is it your opinion too, like that of many others, that withdrawing the military from such an important national fight would, if you like, water down the gains we have made so far, in spite of the bottled except of that? Um, thank you. Uh, Operation Vanguard, mm. as we are made to believe, is uh, a combination of both the military and the police. And right. to, we are being told that the military component uh, will be removed. Right. And then we'll have the police and drone pilots that have been trained. Right. And other forest guards to take o uh, right. to, to take I over. I think the migration is there too as well. Exactly, <coughs> and um, for me, I think it's unfortunate because it, Why looks, is it? it, it looks to me oh. like the government is trying to shift blame to single out the military as the most corrupt component of a whole government enterprise that is involved in illegal mining. Is that what you see? That's what I see because it is both that there, there are there is a, a somebody who sits in the office of the president. Who was caught on tape taking bribe from Galamse people when that person supposed to be defending the nation against Galamse? All we saw was that he was quite washed and they kept at the presidency by an investigation. At, well, investigation of sort. And today, we it is the it, it is a matter of public record that mm. government officials, senior officials, are involved in this illicit um, uh, mining mm. we call Galamse. So it could not be the case that it's the military that is solely responsible for the failure. To be honest with you, there was no gain. Mm. What the, the only gain, there was no gain in the fight against Galamse. 
if you go to the riverside river pra mm. the last i went to through uh, the avarian border at um, elubo the, the the tepidity of the water mm. is so bad as compared to 2016. <laughs> if you go to where um, our national communication officer held a press conference mm. you could see and you fear for the livelihood Jeffo of Prasso, yeah. yeah Jeffo Prasso. and you could see that we, we have not done anything. There's, there's no positive to take away from this whole uh, issue of Galam Sefai. Mm. The only positive out of it is for government agencies, uh, government officials, because they push the ordinary people outside and uh, not to mine. That is basically what took place. They, they seized excavators mm -hmm. and they collected from them. And as we all know today, those excavators made their way back into Galam Sefai operations at the behest of government officials. So there is no fight, you see? You know that you, for a fact? Yes, it is my honestly, it is my honestly held view, and there's okay. a, it's a matter of public record right. that government officials are involved, the Which party, officials MPP are official John Boyd is involved. I Yesterday, mean, so if they are held, if it's held, excuse me, my brother, excuse me. I think that you have to be careful, because he's using a platform. That's what so when he's done saying this. Honorable Kennedy, the pawn is on record. I can produce you the video to have accused even the National Youth Organizer of the MPP of involving Galamsey operations, citing Johnny, a place where he has a conversation on 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 Eric, allow me. Okay. and and to to the extent that i can say for a fact you take the, take the views of honorable Kennedy J. japan to yeah, be sacrosanct yeah yeah I, I didn't take it to be sacrosanct but that is a very senior government uh, official <laughs> and Kennedy <laughs> japan <laughs> happens to be a jewel um uh, of the mpp so if he is speaking who am i when the crocodile comes from this uh, from the sea to tell you that the whale has given birth who am i to doubt are you getting me so you see this the 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 new uh, solution with regard to taking the military out and bring a new component will not solve the problem of galamsey why would it solve you don't have you don't have uh, faith the, in the fact that drones have been procured in actual fact, drone pilots have been have been trained uh, the youth have been conscientized they have been told to mine and mine properly and you don't have faith in it i don't have any faith in it uh, because the approach in itself it's a failure to start with. Are you being pessimistic? No, I'm not being pessimistic. I'm being real. Um, you see, my take on it, on how best we can fight the issue of Galamse mm. has to do, it, it's not just putting military people to fight people. You see, when people are desperate and they believe that they don't have any stake in society, they'll be, they'll be willing to put their lives on the line. People continue to die every day mm. from Galamse. Some are being killed, we see them on social media, but more continue to go. So government first and foremost need to engage chiefs and people. When you say you ban Galamse, yet excavators are going to the forest, nobody is reporting. You ask yourself, where are the chiefs, where are the opinion leaders, where are the assemblymen? Mm -hmm. Are you getting me? Mm -hmm. So there's a need for government to engage in aggressive public relations work, mm -hmm. dialogue, to, to actually explain to people the rationale of Andy Galamse and how to sustainably mine mm -hmm. in, a, in a safer manner that the water the people drink tomorrow will not kill them because of cyanide that has filled our water Is bodies. Is that not why there's youth in mining? The, so, so that they are taught how to do artisanal mining in a proper way. How the do good I, professor from Pombwatin said that. A good professor from Pombwatin who is on record to have said that concessions are given to people so that they get money and support the NPP. Uh, part, uh, concessions uh, are not illegal. No, he said that, uh, ill uh, how do we call it? Um, uh, don't forget that the person that you're talking mm -hmm. uh, uh, himself has been accused of engaging in illegal mining. In fact, we saw videos and pictures of his son deep into the forest, very destroying the forest virtually. His son is not uh, engaged in illegal mining. Well, we asked him at the sauna. Well, you asked him at the sauna, but what he tells you, did you go as a media house to go investigate for yourself? Yes, Don't expect him to indict himself and indict his son. <coughs> he, he cannot Johnny, do that. Johnny. He can't indict himself his son. Yeah, he can't indict himself and indict his son. <laughs> he have to clear himself, but it is the job of the media to go further. But as we see mm. on the face of available evidence right. is the fact that we kick people out of the Galam, say the ordinary citizens mm. who have no power, we push them out in the Pacific fight against Galamsey, we seize the excavators. In actual fact, the media, even the NDC, stood solidly behind President Akufuado when he declared a fight against Galamsey because, look, we all see, we all know, we all know and we all admit that the dangers posed by the destruction that is going on with regard to our water bodies. Only so for us to see- So the asking you to support him one more time. Don't give up oh, in spite of the bottom there is no Are you going to- There is no sincerity on the part of the president. There is no sincerity because we speak right now. The minister, 
at the center of this galam city he has traveled with him abroad it is just a way to whitewash him and we had Charles Bissou still sitting at the office of the president. So how do we trust you? There's no trust for me. There, there, there have been reports from the pits of Galamse, and this will be my final to you and I'll come to Eric, that some of the, the military men, or if you like, the men in uniform, not just military, has <coughs> become a gold mine for them to be assigned on to Operation Vanguard. It's become more like the peacekeeping, yes. uh, where you know, once you go in there, you, you are sure to get some money. Yes. So your argument then that the government is trying to single out the military to make them look like the apostles of evil may not necessarily hold completely true. Yeah, I still stand by that because I, I totally agree that the Operation Vanguard in itself is just a corrupt enterprise that has been sent in there. And they lost focus with regard to what they are, they're supposed to go and do there. So I'm not actually contesting the fact that the military people have been involved in corrupt activities. Mm. I'm trying to say that you can't take the military and leave out the police. Okay. You can't leave the police out and then leave out the politician. So who should go there? And I'm saying that the whole... Cancel it. And I'm saying that the new approach... We need a whole new approach. Okay. Taking out just the military and leave the police. What do the anti-corruption perception in the tell us? Who has the most corrupt institution in Ghana? Okay. It's, it's, you say it's the police uh, by the reports. Eric, coming there. And see, I, the, the views expressed on this platform by my two panelists are entirely theirs. They are not ours. Absolutely. And remember that they are also politicians. So, Eric, let me, let me, come, you to see, you. I, let me come to you now. I'll ask you the same questions I asked him. The withdrawal of the military, does this signal a f a, an end to the fight? Does it signal that the fight is deteriorating? Or does it signal the fact that we have given up on this fight? You see, I think that the NDC will never learn. And I, I wish that they do. Because, I mean, for me, <laughs> as a consummate Democrat, we expect that you have an opposition party that would um, actually be up to to, to scratch when it comes to these conversations because mm -hmm. uh, whatever happens, yeah. we need that opposition to, I mean, enrich the democracy that we have. Mm -hmm. But they've essentially disappointed throughout their period in opposition. Really? It looks like they're going to stay there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You see, this whole idea of Galamse is totally different from what we call the community mining initiative that Gavin has actually uh, decided to bring mm -hmm. to the fore. Because whatever you like, whether you like it or not, these are individuals who, there were so many people who had the requisite licensing to be able to mine. Mm. However, there were so many other individuals who were also indulged in all sorts of things that were, acts that were illegal, mm -hmm. right? That's what Mr. Kalam say. And government has gone through a process mm. of actually validating all these individuals and come up with a community mining mm. uh, initiative. Mm. I mean, I will sit here and say that, yes, in, probably in some areas, there are still some uh, aspects of Galamse mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't rule it out 100%. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that it's happening. Mm -hmm. However, what would happen is that the initiative by the various stakeholders mm -hmm. will bring a stop to some of these things as we go forward. Mm -hmm. It is never true that we've never seen any significant improvement in issues to do with our environment and our water bodies in the last three years. Now, so, coming from a political uh, press come, conference at uh, yeah, you see, but you see, so can you can you can you imagine? You see, and that is where I find that these are friends are shameless. Can Why? you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine the state of that particular river? Right. If we had allowed the the, the menace and how the the the, the uh, Galamse was rife under their watch. Three years or four years, could you have imagined how that particular river would look like? So you see that at this point, is the, it, the no, prior is river it, looks better. No, uh, significantly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Just cast your mind to the menace mm. and the distraction, the wanton distraction of people's farms and river bodies and water bodies across the country when we took over, right? And then extrapolate it three years down the line. And this whole idea. So, so you're no, saying no, you see, but you're I, saying on record am, that the Pra River looks I am, better. I am telling looks better you, than what I'm it just would saying have that, I'm just saying that, just avert your mind to a, a situation. Mm. If government had not done anything about okay. the president had not shown enough conviction and say that listen, this is something that cannot be allowed mm. to be uh, 
perpetrated right. or by a period because we are essentially ruining the environment for generations yet unborn and did something about it. And I'm saying that. So you're proud of the fight so far? E exactly. I mean, you see, you know, when it comes to these conversations, it's always easy to sort of uh, highlight the challenges or the, the, the issues that have happened, the negative okay. ones, right? But we mm -hmm. all know that over a period, and even the, the influx of mm -hmm. uh, especially Chinese people who were uh, mining and bringing in all these, uh, what they call chamfans and mm -hmm. all of those mm -hmm. things. And the, the things that the, uh, the ministry and the, uh, the committee has even put together in terms of having speed boats and the, uh, now they're bringing in all these drones, trained the, the for people to The speed boats were mentioned in the 2019 budget. Exactly. We have not seen them. Oh, but they're working. I mean, a couple of days ago. They're working where? A couple of days ago. Listen, let me finish. A couple of days ago, there was even news uh, that some people who had some chimpanzees on a few rivers had been arrested. I'm not and talking about chimpanzees. I'm talking about as a speed boat. Yes, but it's work, the, the ministry had stated categorically that it's there. But I'm saying that. You see, but the people on the ground say they have not seen the well, speed boat. But they, they exist. I mean, unless, of course, I'm, uh, I didn't hear correctly. But okay. you can also double check. Right. That is the whole point. Mm. And I'm saying that. You see, this whole idea of trying to muddy or uh, ring fence the mining mm. so that it's regulated, it's done at the community level, young people will find employment mm. and uh, this, the community will benefit from it. It's what essentially government has done. Right. So the fact that you go around and you see people mining does not mean that at this point they're actually engaged in Galamse, okay. right? Because it's properly regulated. Let, let's let's they look at that. actually look stated at that you more than a thousand mm. communities okay. have been actually validated that mm -hmm. they can go in there and mine. You, now, you, this you're, whole you're conversation... Saying, oh, hold on for me, you're, you're, you're saying that he's talking about the negatives. Let's talk about the positives. Let's check the boxes. Can you give me top of top of your mind five achievements since we started this campaign in 2017? The positives. He's spoken about the negatives. He's spoken about the fact that there have been government officials who have been complicit. The excavators are missing. Uh, there's somebody working at the presidency who has been found guilty on on uh, tape. He's talking about Professor Frimpong Boati and his child. So many other yeah, things. But those let's are, those let's, are, let's see, talk about the positives. See, the positive, what, what, are, what, what are, have we achieved what, what, since we what started are the, the fight? Yeah. Right, listen, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I'm an expert in the field. But I know for a fact that even the uh, uh, Ghana Water Company right. at a point stated categorically that the cost of actually um, treating, treating the water, water right. right, or the period where Galamse was at its peak mm. was... I mean, enormous, it was exorbitant. They have said that again. They've, yeah, the and ago. over a period, no, yeah, and over a period, it improved. Right. And I'm saying that, as we speak, we can't sit here and uh, pretend that there's some some bad elements are not out there engaging in illegal mining. But I'm saying the government had decided that all the people who were into small scale mining mm. at the point were made to cease operating, so that there will be some proper validation of these individuals to go back and work. Right. And then. A certain set of rules of engagement in terms of what you do. So I know I come from an area where we we have community mining, mm. and there was a lot of There's problems. No, with, in your there, area. no, there was a lot of problems with Galam Say. Okay. But now people are engaged in proper community mining practices. Okay. You understand? Mm. So I can't sit here and even pretend that I'm, I, I'm not aware of these things. Again. Issues to do with enforcement, making okay. sure that like what they have done with the drones, and making sure that people who have been designated to work in a particular area are doing the right things. Okay. Right. Then the conversation around the military, for instance. Right. Now that it's moved from uh, Galamse, where mm. the people who had uh, the proper licenses have been given licenses to do, mm. then you go through to issues to do with monitoring and evaluation mm. and making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Now, so standing down the military, for me, I don't think it's anything negative. Is it a, what is is it a important? smart decision? What is important? Is it a smart me? decision? No, that because uh, what is it that they are going to do when maybe the menace of the wanton destruction and the n number of people who are actually engaged in illegal uh, mining mm -hmm. has reduced? So At this point, they have to... Because at that point, it, it could be a very crisis. Let, let, me, a, let, me, ask, let, me, ask, let me ask you a question. Before, just gonna, before, the, fight me, started, before yeah. the fight started in 2017, mm. the Ghana Water Company had complained mm. that the cost of treating water, in fact, the silt in their plants were becoming unbearable. Mm. Then there was a ban. Mm -hmm. 
and the ultimatum exceeded. We banned, we held on for it, I think, about a year or more. Mm -hmm. And oh. then, and what was the effect? Well, <laughs> so it well was and then, effects, and then it started. Right? Yes. And then Ghana Water Company mm -hmm. didn't complain mm -hmm. again. But as recent as two months ago, Ghana Water Company started complaining. Yes. This time, <laughs> aggravated the complaints to say that about 40% of the water they collect is not usable because they have a lot of silt in them. Mm. Prices of water will go up and the skin diseases and the rest that will come because of whatever we are drinking is enormous. Would you say in between that 2017 period when the ban was enforced to now that it's been lifted to now that we have community mining, that something is going on wrong? No, but that's what I'm saying. Again? You see, this is a, it's a national conversation. Mm. It's something that is extremely important to the president. And he showed enough conviction, mm. you know, to even uh, the angst of some people who felt that it was a very unpopular decision because it has political implications and okay. all of those things. But he still went ahead and did it. Mm. And I'm saying that if you want to be candid, with, we want to be candid with ourselves and okay. say that if you allow the, the situation mm. that was pertaining at the time to persist to till this day, mm. it would be total distraction. Now, some, a, a lot of uh, uh, successes have been chalked in that regard. I believe strongly that, and that's my point, I believe strongly that now that the military is being asked to stand down, right, there has to be proper collaboration between the various stakeholders. For one, he it's, says it that is you're, not, you're, you're yeah, taking out the military yeah, to yeah, single yeah, them out. Oh, nobody has. As the no, but it's, as the, and as that is again, that's again, that's again a certain if you like, an appetite for sensationalism and <laughs> let's say, they're just so creative. Let me tell you something. Yeah, tell I me. believe strongly that as a community mm -hmm. where there's this mining, okay. and there's that pertains in my, my, my constituency mm -hmm. and where I come from, is that there has to be clear collaboration between the people, the community, the stakeholders, the district assembly, the security, but to ensure that what it is that has been designated as community mining mm. uh, uh, concessions. He, he said that too. And, and, so I mean he, said, done, he said one of the positives. Done properly, mm. right? So that people do not go outside of what they have been asked to do. Right. And then <clears throat> we can now come back after a few months and say, and let's evaluate the, uh, the performance right. of this thing. But government's uh, 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 orientation from day one mm. was not to stop mining entirely, right. to make sure that it's done in a proper manner is done in an environment that it's actually safe for people and then the land is even reclaimed. Have, have, we, seen, have we achieved that? Have, have we but achieved you see, that? but you take one step at a time. Okay. Right? So what have and we so achieved all, of, what have we achieved of the all, three objectives? Which because we, we at least now it's, it's, it's regulated. Okay. There's a certain a, a proper policy in place so that you identify the people who are doing this. So either to if for instance somebody goes into the bush somewhere and does something and leaves pits uh, unattended to and everything, right? You don't know who is responsible okay. for it. Now you do know who is responsible okay. for it. Now there are all sort of uh, R -R mechanisms in so place, having the drones in place to ensure that they're doing the right things and everything. Ensure that people who are here to engage in mining within the river bodies. Now, even though the mining is ongoing, it's very rare to hear any stories of people actually setting up within the water bodies and mining within, which was something that was rampant under their watch. So, okay. That's enough. Welcome. Thank you, Eric. Right, thank you. What's, what's on WhatsApp this morning? Right. So, a few messages coming in this morning. Good morning, Johnny. Is it necessary for NDC communicators to do propaganda with every issue? If that is the case, then everybody can be their communicator, including me, Kwame Tamale. This is from Prince. Uh, Prince. It says, uh, I'm not surprised at the EC website being down because... Uh, Mrs. Jim Mensa led EC had not been open and fair to Ghanaians since they assumed office. 2020 general elections is a crucial one and the EC must be careful not to plant this country to any chaotic situation. Good morning, TV3. Chiefs are the custodians of the lands. So they are the only people who can fight Kalamse. Government should provide them the necessary tools and skills to do so. Who do? Chirpone. Good morning, Johnny. I think the December polls is just an exercise of choosing between the bad and worse government and oh. nothing more. <laughs> what did we do wrong as citizens to deserve this? Uh, these wolves in sheep skin have really sunk the ship Ghana into the bottom of the sea. And yes, nobody seems to care since when have election turned into a choice between bad and worse. It's pathetic being a Ghanaian. In fact, I don't even want to be called Ghanaian. 
As much as I dislike Trump's uh, shithole country's comment, I think he was right on point. Good morning, TV3. I don't understand MPP guys these days. Do they want to tell us they are the only ones who are educated? They also see uh, things differently. This is from Muda Tamale. We have a lot more messages uh, coming up. We'll read them as and when they drop. Mm. You're done? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty <laughs> That's pretty short anyway. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're wrapping up. Uh, maybe two minutes. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the facelift coming up at the uh, what the Aqua J uh, interchange. A very beautiful. It's getting an aesthetic facelift. Uh, Accra is becoming beautiful again. I hope Kumasi will get his share. Takari will get his share. Tamar will get his share. But the key corporates will be the political parties and the churches and event organizers who will go and deface the place with posters. I don't know if you have seen it, but. Do you expect to see posters there? <laughs> <laughs> Especially in an election year? Um, there's a precedence, especially in New York. Mm. Um, I, I read about <clears throat> how the youth used to use graffiti, graffiti. to deface. And the, the mayor at the time, I think Giuliani, mm. um, used a consistent approach to paint after them. Okay. And over time, they stopped. Mm. Um, what we currently see at the Aquaje Interchange is something is, is beautiful to behold. Okay. Um, I like it. Um, we should not wait to paint after religious bodies. If only we can take serious our enforcement mechanisms mm. to punish <laughs> severely um, anybody, whether it's the poop that comes from Rome to mm. come and paste religious articles or whatever it is there right. they should be taken to court and it should it should we should make it costly mm. for anybody any adventure okay. to go there to go and deface mm. um, the beautiful paintings that thing that um aquaje interchange into a place where right. while driving you you want to have a view mm -hmm. before you go mm -hmm. um so i'm not i'm it is if you ask me whether I'm expecting them to return, mm -hmm. it is possible because we are more or less like a lawless um, <laughs> nation right now. We because nobody enforced the law, so we we like breaking them. This is too beautiful to be defaced, I think. Um, it, it is too beautiful, but when people know they can do anything and get away with it, I tell you they may attempt it. So what is pos What we can do now is for the AMA officials to be mm. on their guard mm. and whoever goes there to deface which somebody the church may tell you that we are not responsible but mm. once it benefits them we should pinpoint at them and seal them right and Eric, i think that will help this Eric, you're a creative person i'm sure you were <laughs> delighted when you saw this one tell me i i, I think it's, it's fantastic it's beautiful uh, we can do that in so many other places i like the call that it should be extended to other parts of the right. country um, they, I, and I, I, I stand with him. I mean, pro companies pay loads of money to advertise properly. Mm -hmm. And I think that and you, the city authorities are quite strict on them. And I feel that anybody that actually pays stuff on unauthorized <coughs> areas in, on the, in an environment should be made to pay for it. And I'm sure that the city authorities or even the local assemblies would actually uh, make enough revenue from mm -hmm. that. And the person that is um, advertising. It's responsible okay. for where it, it goes. So you mm -hmm. can't e essentially shake responsibility mm -hmm. and say that you're not aware. And that's not to say that people should not advertise, but go through the right channels to be right. able to advertise. And I think that what can also even happen okay. is that the authorities should find a ways of finding innovative means of having designated places where mm -hmm. these posters can go at a little fee. Right. But you can't just, I mean, uh, the English would say, with the go yeah. everywhere and then yeah. start painting things. I think that they had, you know, you know the And there's this areas. thing that you see in places, I mean, it used to be around a lot, where you go somewhere and say, post no bill. Right. right? That actually even defaces the, 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 the structures. Right. Because really, essentially, you're not allowed to post by virtue mm. of the fact that you want to post. Mm. You understand? Mm. So I think that um, you're saying that political parties are corporate yeah, and yeah, all of these yeah. things. That's true. But the poster on there would have a face of somebody. It would mm -hmm. have 
an indication that this is the person that is. And right. those people should be held should accountable, be held. should okay. be held responsible. Thank you very much. I remember that uh, we used to, we, we painted that uh, Aqua J interchange with the colors of the national flag. And then now we have uh, a lot of beautiful art. You should go and see it. The symbol of the Gus State is there. You see people, <coughs> the migration story, the good old Aqua J is there. So many other things. It actually would pass for a full class for creative people. But congratulations to the uh, Ghana Association of Visual Artists and also to the Accra Do It and the, um, uh, the assembly. Well, the assembly there, the Nana, Nana Otu Wahine Champon is the president of the visual artists and also to the Clotty Kole Municipal Assembly for doing this. We love <coughs> you. And um, don't go and spoil it, please. We beg you. Thank you to Matthias Alago. He's a Volta Regional Youth Organizer of the NDC and also to Eric Chum, a member of the NPP's communication team. He is also uh, looking closely at the seat and uh, the <laughs> who he has filed. We would know. Thank you very much for coming. Eric. Thank you. Most grateful. Thank you very much. Matthias. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's